Apple's new iPadOS 18 update is gonna be way better than you think, making the iPad Pro finally pro again, fundamentally changing the iPad as we know it, and moving forward into the next era of technology. So in this video, I'm gonna discuss five major changes that we can expect to see on the new M3 iPad Pro that has been rumored for well over a year, making the perfect combination that I believe will be well worth upgrading for the first time in over five years. So let's go ahead and get started with major change number one, which is Apple going full force into generative AI for the iPad Pro. As we already know, the rest of the tech industry has been going into AI like crazy, like Google's Gemini that's messing around with generative AI. Of course, we recently saw OpenAI's Sora go viral, basically turning text prompts into high quality video, which has been mind blowing, especially seeing Sam Altman on X replying to people, creating videos out of their text prompts, which is just crazy. So over the past few months, there have been many, many leaks showing off what Apple's doing in terms of generative AI as they're preparing for iOS 18 and iPadOS 18. And apparently you're gonna be able to ask Siri to generate images on the fly even allowing you to make adjustments as you go instead of having to redo the entire prompt. And I believe that Apple's goal is to create something like OpenAI Sora, being able to generate videos on your device, which is crazy. But in the near term, I believe Apple's gonna allow you to use to create images which are gonna be very useful for people like artists. And I believe this is gonna be such a compelling change that Apple's gonna to try to package it up with the new M3 iPad Pro with exclusive generative AI features to really try to get people to upsell. Now moving on to change number two, this one has to do with the pricing leaks for the M3 iPad Pro. For over a year, we've had leaks of the price being at least $1,500 to $1,800 for the M3 iPad Pro, depending on the size that you want. But that didn't really make sense at all because right now, the base 11 inch iPad Pro is $800. So to me, the only explanation that made sense was that Apple was gonna do something like an iPad Ultra that's gonna have very exclusive features. The idea is that Apple would bring the full version of macOS exclusively to the M3 iPad Pro so long as you connect it to the Magic Keyboard, basically turning it into a real MacBook. This especially made sense because we also had leaks of Apple giving it a landscape camera, so it'll be more like a MacBook than ever before. We've also been expecting a new Magic Keyboard Gen 2, which Mark Gurman said would literally become more like a MacBook by featuring an aluminum bottom case with a larger, more Mac-like trackpad and more Mac-like keys. This would really give you that Mac OS feel, so it made perfect sense to combine that with Mac OS. However, we recently had leaks that the pricing isn't gonna be as high as we expected because the displays won't be that expensive. So we're expecting only about a $200 price increase. So the 11 inch iPad Pro would start at $999. So because of that, I'm not expecting Mac OS at all, just another iPad OS update that's gonna become more like Mac OS, but still isn't gonna be fully featured. I'm really just hoping for the file manager to improve because right now it's more similar to the iPhone's file manager than what we have on the Mac. For change number three, I believe that we're gonna be getting updates to Final Cut and logic because right now they're currently quite bad. There are many missing features, like for example, stabilization. You cannot even get that on Final Cut for the iPad, which we use for basically every single video that we make. And on top of that, we tested the performance and compared it to the M2 MacBook, and yep, it does not compete at all 
the iPad is slower in almost every case. So with that said, you basically can't switch to the iPad only if you're a Final Cut Pro video editor. You still need to use your Mac. Now, I'm personally not a Logic user, but I've been reading up online that Logic users are quite disappointed with the new Logic for iPad. Some even said that it's essentially an upgraded version of GarageBand for iPad, so it's still nowhere near fully featured. So I would hope that Apple would be upgrading both of them this year to add more features like we have on the Mac. Now moving on to change number four, I'm expecting that we are gonna get even more apps that are coming from the Mac very soon. Like for example, we had recent leaks that Apple is working on a new version of Xcode that's gonna be using generative AI for coding. And yes, we are expecting that very soon, probably later this year with iOS 18 and iPadOS 18. Now, for example, we did have leaks of Apple preparing to bring a new cloud-based version of Xcode over to the iPad. That was a couple of years ago, but we still don't have it. So I believe Apple saved the Xcode app for later, which I think is coming this year. So just imagine being able to ask C to generate lines of code or get certain things done automatically instead of having to do everything manually. Or for another example, imagine rewriting multiple paragraphs of code into just a few lines by asking C to consolidate all of the code together and do it in a more efficient way. That's something that I think Apple is gonna be working on and I hope they're gonna have an Xcode for iPad app this year. And finally, for change number five, we had a recent leak that iOS 18 and iPadOS 18 are gonna have a complete UI redesign to make it look more like Vision OS. Because right now, when you switch to Vision OS, it definitely feels a little bit weird and different than what we're used to on our iPhones and our iPads. So if Apple kind of makes everything look similar, it's gonna make it a lot easier for somebody to test out the Vision Pro and feel very familiar familiar and used to it. And personally, I'm all for it because to me, the UI of iOS and iPadOS is starting to feel a bit bland and boring after many years of generally the same design language with a few tweaks here and there. And I used the Vision Pro headset for a couple of weeks and I've got to tell you, I really enjoyed how everything looked and felt. It felt really intuitive, easy to use, had a different, nice, new, modern feel to it, and I would love it if Apple would carry over some of those design elements over to the iPad to give it that fresh look and feel, especially if they combine it with some of the new AI features that we're expecting with iPadOS 18. But you let me know what you're most excited for down in the comment section below, and if you personally think iPad iPadOS 18 is finally gonna make the iPad Pro Pro again. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one, and check out one of those two right over there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.